Hi guys, welcome back to Waxing On. It's Wednesday, and today is Classic Rock. Today we're going to look at a group that it was one of my favorite bands from back in the 60s. Although, you have to remember back in the 60s, we didn't have FM radio, so main exposure to this music was on AM. And this group had a string of number one hits starting about 1965. Now, I don't have a lot of albums to show you from this because, let's face it, 1965... Man, I was in like in grade 5 or grade 6, so I, I didn't have a lot of money to spend on records. I have gone back though, and during the digital age here, I've had a number of digital downloads of the music. So I was able to go back, and instead of buying the individual albums, which again in those days had a couple of hits, a lot of filler. Not that those songs might not have been good, but they weren't getting the airplay that the hits were getting. So I've been able to go back in the digital age and create my own greatest hits album. And the band I'm talking about is The Love and Spoonful, um, put together by John Sebastian and a Toronto guitarist, Zal Yanofsky. Now, during the 60s, like say mid-60s, they had a string of hits. Um, Nashville Cats, Jug Band Music, uh, Did You Ever Have to Make Up Your Mind, uh, You Didn't Have to Be So Nice, Summer in the City, Nashville Cats. Um, they were just hit after hit. And I've gone back and I've taken most of mine from the albums that I'm just going to show you here now. Uh, first one was the album called Daydream. And again, a couple of hits from each of the ones. And these were just my favorite songs. Uh, the other one, uh, Do You Believe in Magic? And the last one, Hums of the Love and Spoonful. Now, I realize I'm not covering a lot of their material. Uh, I'm covering what I thought were my favorite songs from what I'd heard on the radio. And I still play it a lot today. I mean, it's still great music, and it was very definitive for the, for the times. Now, they did split up after, and if you watch any of the YouTube videos near uh, the split, Zell was really not into what's going on. He was kind of goofing around during some serious songs. I remember seeing one where Sebastian was singing Darling Be Home Soon, and Zell's mugging along with that. And it really wasn't gelling. So he left the band. But surprisingly, uh, Zell Yanofsky became a restaurateur, and in 1979, he opened a restaurant called Shea Piggies in Kingston, Ontario. And he was running it and well at a bakery in Kingston until his death in early 2000s. So he had kind of developed a second career for himself. Actually, he'd actually written a cookbook and was working on a second one by the time he passed away, so I think it's still in the works. Uh, maybe his son was looking after finishing it off. But John Sebastian went on and he had a solo career. Now some of you may remember seeing him in the Woodstock video or on the Woodstock album hearing him. He was kind of the impromptu uh, host of Woodstock. Showed up and he kind of just took over that job. He wasn't originally on the roster to be there and his contribution to the festival and the songs he did there were, were really excellent as well. Post Love and Spoonful, uh, I do a one John Sebastian album picked it up and I'll tell you I think it was a discount bin fine because it wasn't selling a lot and to me it was his one big hit after the Love and Spoonful and that was the theme song for the show Welcome Back Cotter and you still hear that song once in a while I see it I hear it in commercials I hear it uh, playing in different venues and it's one that I think he'd probably be most known for in his solo career at this point and that's what the album is called uh, John Sebastian Welcome Back this was from 1960, nope, 1976, so about the time the, the show had come out. Uh, but still, he's out there doing, I see he's still doing concerts, he's uh, still performing. He had hosted a PBS special I saw a couple weeks ago. I uh, remember when I talked about going back doing the show about the birds, I'd seen the, their uh, segment of that show, and it was uh, about folk music in America. So John Sebastian is still very much a proponent of this folk rock or country folk or whatever you call it. It's kind of hard to define what the Love and Spoonful were about. It was poppy, but it was such well-written and uh, catchy tunes. So if you get a chance, check them out. Um, digitally, there's a lot of it out there. And again, that's where I got most of my collection because at the time they were popular, I really didn't have money to buy records. So uh, I've taking advantage of what's available now to me to be able to put together my own greatest hits package. All the songs that I really liked. And hard copies are also still available. 
If you get a chance, check it out. It's a taste of the 60s. I'm sure most of you know these songs by heart. You'll probably be able to sing along with them. Uh, they're just great, timeless tunes. So that's it for today. John Sebastian and the Love and Spoonful. We'll see you on Friday when we're going to look at classical music with a twist. Till then, everybody take care. We'll see you on Friday.